Okay, so we are live. Hello, hello, Zoe. How are you? Very good, thanks, Sean. How are you? I am wonderful. I was feeling a little, I'm still a little bit under the weather, very nasal, but um, I'll I'll be okay. And then I have these little ones, so don't be don't be surprised, guys. I am at home, so don't be surprised if you see a little face just come near to my face. <laughs> as much as I tell them. Mommy's in a meeting, they still come. <laughs> of course they right? do. <laughs> um, so guys, you are also free to ask questions in the feed for the chat. So as we continue our conversation, feel free to ask your questions as we go along, right? So we are here talking with Zoe Lenkovich of Waste Aid, And Zoe is the head of programs and engagement and we're talking about practical way solutions. And so we and I had a nice, wonderful chat prior to this, um, where I mentioned to her, I'm all about giving people practical solutions because I want to break stigmas attached to waste um, and to change the way people think and act towards it. So it's not something that we're gonna just throw away anymore. Let's see what are some of the uses that we can put towards it, right? So let me just give you all a little Brief about Zoe, growing waste aid from the ground up, Zoe Lenkovich combines technical and creative skills with waste management expertise. A professional waste manager since 2002, Zoe has led municipal waste and recycling programs, research studies, campaigns and consultations, workshops and training courses for government, practitioners, and community groups in the UK and in lower income countries. Zoe was the chief author of the award-winning Waste Aid Toolkit called Making Waste Work. And I've actually seen the toolkit, it is really awesome. And works with communities worldwide to deliver genuinely sustainable waste management. So Zoe, let's jump right into the chat. So other than what I just, um, read about you tell us a little bit more um about your work at wasted what prompted you to even get started in the first place so just share that with the listeners sure okay thank you sean and thanks very much for inviting me to be here today it's really exciting and i'm pleased that we're able to do it live so that people can send in their questions uh you know as, as they come up so my background in waste aid i suppose um in the UK and um, as in much of Europe, uh, waste management is a is quite a well developed sector. So we have you know professional associations, we have the magazines, we have you know all the the news channels and lots of conferences and events, and you can do a degree or a master's or whatever you like um, to to you know join the the waste management industry. Um, but in many parts of the world, as you well know, um, there isn't really a waste sector. So there might be some kind of lone individuals who, who have identified that waste is a problem or who are trying to recover value from the waste materials through some kind of reprocessing or recycling. But it's a lot more difficult for, for people to set up um, initiatives, businesses, um, organisations, whatever you want to do. Um, working with waste when you don't have that bigger kind of ecosystem that you fit into mm -hmm. so waste kind of identified that um that this was a challenge uh, for many people in many parts of the world and so we set about um uh, you know setting up waste aid so that we could share information knowledge and skills with the people and um, people that need it um so we we've created the waste aid toolkit which is designed for kind of community leader levels so you don't need to have any background in waste management and um, to be able to you know hopefully find useful information from the toolkit and that's available at wasteaid.org forward slash toolkit um uh -huh. it's to download um so we created that and then we also work um in advocacy so kind of trying to push waste management up the agenda uh, because it's not, it's never been really prioritised, understandably so. Um, you know, most people in their right minds don't think twice about waste. You know, they they throw it and that's that. Well, that's that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
so um so we're really trying to um to you know um do research and create evidence to persuade decision makers um in in government and, and international bodies that waste management is worth investing in uh, it's a particularly valuable tool for uh, achieving sustainable development and of course the sustainable development goals um it's all very uh, very connected so we see a lot of potential there for waste management we just need to get people's focus and attention and get that investment going into it exactly and as you said as you mentioned the sustainable development goals so guys i just shared the link if you wanted to um send your questions as well um so waste management actually is under sustainable development goal 12 which is responsible consumption and production and everything that we are talking about will tie into that goal and i really um so we and i think we it's linkedin we connected on so we first i yes. think yeah that's right right and um you know, I really liked when I saw that she worked with communities because I think um, having a, a collective of people within a specific space that all want to do something to better what happens with their waste, reduce the amount of garbage that they're putting out, and to also benefit the community in a positive way, I think it's, it's really the direction that we need to head to. Um, so I, I am also an advocate for getting as many communities involved <clears throat> in waste management projects. We do have some fantastic communities here, uh, Zoe, that have really started um, that kind of work. One of them is the Cashew Gardens community, um, where they started collecting their plastic waste and they're moving on to other items. Right. So we want to continue to do more of that. There are other communities and other parts of the country that are doing really great things. Um, so, guys, if you're a community group, please connect with me as well, because I would love to continue to share the work that you're doing. Right. So the other question, Zoe, is um, as I read, you, you have worked with rural, low to medium, low to middle, sorry, income communities. Right. What are some of the successes and some of the lessons learned so far through working with those kinds of communities through your work? Sure. OK, thanks, Sean. Um, so I think I'll, I'll, if I take one example, um, so I've been project manager of a waste aid project in the Gambia, a tiny country in West Africa. Um, for a couple of years now, um, it was funded by UK aid. And what we've done there is we have built a simple um, training workshop in a coastal village. And then mm -hmm. we've trained local people, um, about 100 local people, to collect, identify and sort their different plastic wastes. And then with one particular plastic waste, so LDPE, which is the slightly stretchy, um, I'm looking for an example on my desk. So this is a tissue packet. This is LDPE, is slightly stretchy. You often sometimes yeah. get water in these pouches or um you know, plastic bags all that kind of uh, that kind of plastic so we're working with, with local people in this coastal village to um to turn that plastic into paving tiles um now oh, what we do is we, yeah so we we use very very simple tools because we want this, these technologies to be accessible to the poorest people yeah so you know we're not into spending a lot of money on complicated machinery and getting it imported um you know we, we want people to be to be able to do this for themselves so all you need to make the paving tiles is a, a metal drum that you um you, you heat with some firewood underneath and then you need to sort your plastics carefully and that's probably the most technical mm -hmm. part of the training um, uh, mm -hmm. put, the, put the this flexible plastic into the oil drum and when it melt when it melts to a liquid so we're not burning it we're just keeping the fire nice and small turning it from a solid into a liquid once it's a liquid then we mix in sand and stir it around and it turns into like a cement like material that we then mm -hmm. turn out into tile molds it sets within about 10 minutes and it creates the most durable paving tiles we have ever found you can drop them on the floor they don't smash you can drive a five-ton truck over them and what we're doing really i suppose we're using the um 
the characteristic of plastic that is often a problem when it's pollution. So the, the mm -hmm. fact that plastic doesn't degrade and it will be around forever, so, well, yeah. great, let's use it in an application that we want to last a long time, you know, mm -hmm. instead of these like single use applications, use it for five seconds and then it's waste. No, yes, no, we're, yeah. we're, we're putting it into something that we want to last years and years. So um, within the, we trained, we've trained about 100 people now, but right at the beginning of the project, when we trained the first class of 30 people, within two months, they had um, processed about a million plastic bags. So that's a million plastic bags that would otherwise have ended up in the Atlantic Ocean or being burned, you know, because that's that's basically the option. People are either oh. going to dump it locally or set fire to it or both. Yeah, um, oh. So, yeah, the equivalent of a million plastic bags just in two months. So by now we must be on like, I don't know, 8 million bags, something like that, that we've diverted wow. from, from poor waste disposal. And so we're making these products um, and then trying to find, you know, good, strong markets for the products is the, oh. the second, you know, yeah. the other side to it, the supply and demand. You, you can supply as much product as you want, but if no one's going to buy it, right, buy it. You, you don't have a business. <laughs> so then, so we've been working on, um, you know, exploring what the potential markets are for these paving tiles. Um, we've had some good successes with domestic customers. Um, and now we're also talking to municipalities, which is great and really exciting. And um, if we can get some of these bigger municipal contracts, for example, um, in the capital city, there's a big informal dump site. And uh -huh. the, the council was invested in waste collection trucks to bring the waste to the dump site. But now they're getting punctures because the dump site is not, you know, it's not a, a, a well-managed landfill right. site, you know. Right. So we're talking now about maybe putting some of our pavers there because they can pick them up and move them when they want to, but just right. to provide a nice track for the for the trucks to to move along on. So mm -hmm. that would that would be a nice uh, nice outcome for the project if we can get that kind of contract, you know, and get really get demand for the product and then we can start really you know collecting more and more of it and it becomes less and less of a pollution problem then right and i i like that because again so it's it's practical in two ways in two senses you're actually taking the the low density polyethylene that's what ldpe it means for people who have missed that part, right yeah <laughs> and um turning it into the tiles but then you're also having another practical solution where especially a lot of muddy areas and stuff using the tiles so that the trucks can roll over because for us here in the in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean we have a lot of mud and dirt and you know for mm. a lot of us we don't have sanitary engineered sites yeah so there's a lot of dirt roads and you know using the tiles in that way is also um, a, a really efficient way of, of reusing waste. One of the other things too that we talk about is, um, that I also talk about is the waste management hierarchy and starting, you know, with uh, reduction. And, but I actually call it the six hours. I add refuse at the beginning. If you don't need it, don't take it. And we have reduction because the goal is, and I just had a chat with the CEO of our solid waste management company, Swim Call. And he was saying, you know, there's such a huge percentage of the waste that is in the site that should not even be there in the first place. Yeah. So if we can divert that away from the landfill, put it towards a practical use that we ourselves can benefit from, then I think that's a win-win situation. You know, win for them because they have to manage the only waste that they're managing at the site is the waste that absolutely needs to be there. And then for us, we can have, you know, practical solutions um, that we can use in our everyday lives. I mean, I'm all for things being used that you could use day to day, not something that you could only use once a month. You know, yeah. it has to be it has to be useful because if we want to con to continue to motivate people to, to get into the hang of, you know, reusing uh, waste, looking at waste differently, it has to be in a form that they can use every single day mm -hmm. right Definitely. yeah so um hold on. mommy and i said hold on huh hold on to me sure
Well, I don't know if the listeners can hear me while Sean is away from her desk, uh, but I can talk a little bit as well about how we can reduce waste um, in our day to day lives. So, for example, um, in Nigeria, oh, here's Sean back now. Hey, Sean. Can you hear me? Hi, hi. So you see, I, I'm home. I was my mom. Sorry. Oh, okay, no problem. I was just, I don't know if the listeners could hear me, but I just carried on talking a little bit about yeah, yeah. What, what you were saying about um, how we can reduce waste, you know, to start with in our day to day lives. Um, you know, I've just seen some some awful pictures from Lagos, Nigeria, where people have, you know, there's no waste collection. So people have been throwing their, their, a lot of it is takeaway food cartons, like the polystyrene uh -huh. boxes and PET plastic bottles. They've been throwing them into the, the drainage channels. But then when the rain has come, it's, it's kind of washed all of this waste back out and into the streets. Um, right. So now the place looks like a dump site, you know. But, um, but a lot of these materials, it could have been avoided just with different practices. So, for example, if we, you know, do we always need to buy a fresh plastic bottle every time we're thirsty? You know, all right. we actually want is the liquid. So, you know, can we bring our own reusable water bottle or, you know, st actually stop at a cafe or a restaurant and, and buy a drink in a cup? Like, <laughs> this sounds really old fashioned now, but, you know, does everything have to be on the go and in single use containers? Yeah. Um, and it's good to think about these things before, um, you know, when we're making our buying decisions, especially the, the styrofoam boxes. Are they still um, still in, in common use in Trinidad and Tobago? Because they're a nightmare. They can't be recycled at all. So they just have to go straight to the dump site. So, we're, um, you know, we're really interested in looking at different models. Like, are there ways that businesses can get their products to the customer? without needing, you know, single use disposable plastic uh, for yeah. the packaging. So it's a really exciting space at the moment, I think, working in, in you know, in the battle against plastic pollution and, and, and campaigning for better waste management. I think there's a long way to go, but there's a lot uh -huh. of opportunity to make, make good progress, which is exciting. Exactly. And as you mentioned, that's like that, that sorry, form is like a curse word, you know. <laughs> Because um, we manufacture styrofoam as well. In Trinidad and Tobago specifically, I'm talking okay. about a lot of our, we manufacture 60%, we import 40%. Right, okay. The government was looking to ban the importation. Mm -hmm. However, that will only, that still means 60% of the styrofoam will still be in our natural environment. Yeah. Um, we do have, we have, there are a few companies um, that sell the compostable options, but we don't have an industrial composting facility in Trinidad and Tobago just yet. So you see how it's a hush push of all sorts of, you know, trying to have solutions, but then solutions, um, you know, becoming problems and, you know, trying to start <laughs> back. So it's, exactly. It's, as I speak, as plastics was invented to be the solution when there was rampant deforestation. Yeah. Um, Plastics were invented as the solution for that, but now it's become the problem, right? But we have to also yeah. understand, and I'm, I'm very much a practical singer. That's why I was like, I have to have this chat with Zoe because there are some things that are in plastic that will continue to be in plastic, like prosthetics and you know parts that go in our bodies, and they, so there are certain things that we won't be able to get away from. However, there are things that we still can do. You know, yeah. and you mentioned the reusable water bottle. Um, and, you know, I'm just encouraging people. What we need is some more little water coolers around so people can just top up their bottles. Exactly. Um, because as you said, it's a convenience thing, you know. It was mm -hmm. water bottles were created because of convenience. You realize, okay, people started being on the go a lot more. And as such, they'll get thirsty. So the easiest thing is to just buy a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. You know, but we need to have um options available for people if you want to encourage them to participate in certain activities so have water coolers in certain places we could just fill up our bottles you know yeah. um a lot of offices have them now and they try to encourage their staff to come with their own bottles and their own coffee mugs so mm -hmm. you don't you're not throwing you're not using the styrofoam cups you know get creative with your coffee mug if you want to <laughs> have yeah. your name on it you know <laughs> you know, funky things on it to represent your personality, but there are things that we can do. 
Um, and we have a question from Anne Marie. Um, I think she missed when you was you when you were explaining it, but if you could um, summarize it, she wanted to sure, know how clean, how mm -hmm. clean. Oh no, she wants to know how clean does the LDPE need to be when melted to successfully make the pavers? That's sure. her question. Yeah, thanks for the question, Anne Marie. Um, it's a good question. So it doesn't need to be like spotlessly clean, but you want to get rid of any like um food or sand or cigarette butts or um we have to remove any tape from it, any paper labels. So it's just the LDPE. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be kind of super super clean, but you want to make you know you want to minimise how much other material is contaminating your your plastic when you're melting it um, you can get more information and um, there's a chapter in the waste aid toolkit wasteaid.org forward slash toolkit and then in the menu it's called uh, making construction products from plastic bags something like that and also on our youtube channel if you look up waste aid uh, we've got a one minute video showing how to make the ldpe paving tiles um, and that now has been viewed more than a hundred thousand times which is really exciting um so it, i mean it's just obviously a very short video in reality it takes about half an hour to do a batch but um uh yeah i mean have a look at that and read the uh, read the advice in the toolkit and that should be enough information to get you going right guys okay. so as zoe said it's wasted.org forward slash toolkit um feel free to go to their website and look for the toolkit um and <laughs> little face appearing <laughs> <you are. laughs> he just came to give me a hug oh yeah <laughs> so where's mine, um, where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> feel free guys to go on wasted because they have fantastic information there you can turn plastic bags into baskets of course my favorite is turning organic waste into compost if you're like barbecuing you can learn how to make charcoal there are yeah. so many different options of things that are available for you um to do so I've got clean. My props right here <laughs> yeah so this is right here this has been um crochet uh, by women's Ministry of the Gambia. So this is the mm -hmm. different colour plastic bags that have been crocheted together to make this nice shopping bag. And then actually in my shopping bag, I happen to have one of the paving <laughs> tiles. So this is the kind of product that we can make. This is right. just plastic bags melted down and mixed with sand. Nothing else in it. Okay. That is awesome. Yeah. That's and obviously you can make them different shapes, different colours. We oh, just right. added some iron oxide to this one to make it red. Normally they come out like grey black colour, uh, but mm -hmm. you can also make them green or whatever. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of different different things that you can do with just one simple process, you know. All right. Yeah, and 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 that's what I want to continue to encourage people to do and to continue to advocate for is people, you know, really thinking of the practical ways that we can you know, make waste, increase the life of an item that will typically will be um, just used and thrown away, you know? Mm -hmm. So we've given some ideas. Of course, again, guys, it's waste aid, W A S T E A I D dot org forward slash toolkit um, for their uh, practical solutions documents to help you get your community project started. Um, so go ahead check them out they're also on youtube for those of you who are following me as well um this video will also be on youtube and of course it's going to be available on my facebook page so please continue to share it marva my my friend marva already shared it so share the video with those who you think would this would be an interesting bit of information for them to have because i think as i said in the beginning this is definitely the way that we the direction we should be heading to mm -hmm. um and if more and more groups get involved we have more people being a part of the process versus just you and i do we you know doing what we do <laughs> yeah. um, we need your help <laughs> we, need help, right? um, we generate over seven hundred thousand tons of waste a day so wow. and i mean as I was in, in my conversation with the with the CEO of Swim Call, Mr. Thompson, he said, you know, Sean, we can't manage it alone. You can't manage it alone. So we need as many people to come on board and be innovative and creative 
um, and come up with solutions and come up with ideas. For me, I love educating, so I'm using my platform to continue to teach people. So and and to to tie and and you know collaborate and have discussions with people like yourselves, so they know okay there are options out there that are available for you. Um, you don't have to just sit and think, oh my God, what am I going to do? I have no idea. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. There, you have guides that guidelines that are out there. You have videos that are out there. I just want to continue through my work at Style Environmental to spread the word as much as possible and to get people i see myself as a bridge kind of you know just connect people with the right tools and stuff that they can use um so we are almost to the end of our conversation zoe so i want yes you see it's time always flies when you're having yeah, fun it's true <laughs> <laughs> so um I'm going to, um, guys, if you have any questions, remember this is a live feed. You can also ask us questions as we go along. But just in case you missed it, it will be up on my Facebook page and I will be uploading it on the Sile Environmental YouTube channel. So we have officially relaunched my YouTube channel. So I'm going to be, because I had it there, I never really used to use it. It just was there. So, yeah. <laughs> so I decided to... Um, use this platform as much as social media as much as possible and when i get that opportunity to be in front of people again in person i'll continue to do that work as well too so i'm using uh, my platforms as much as possible to continue to teach people about waste and how they can look at things differently and what they can do at home and you know all of these options as we work towards really managing our waste in a more effective way mm -hmm. um swim call is looking at constructing a sanitary engineered site out of one of our we have three landfills in trinidad um so they're looking at taking one of them it's pretty big so they are looking at rehabilitation and conversion to a sanitary engineered site so oh, we have a lot a lot of things on the on, on the on the you know, on in the, the future, come yeah. on the horizon, yeah. Um, but uh, thank you, Michelle. Good morning. Yeah. So we just want to. Well, it's morning. It's morning here. It's afternoon where Zoe is. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, right. we just want to, you know, just to continue to encourage you. I'm all about motivating and encouraging you to get started. I always say, ask yourself, what can I do tomorrow? What can mm -hmm. I get started with tomorrow using what I have to really help in this goal of re waste reduction, right? And those are that are very creative and, you know, great with their hands. You know, I have friends that made, um, use glass bottles and turn them into lamps. I have another good friend of mine. She was in my... Um, Shell Life Wire cohort, she turns vinyl records into clocks, right? Cool. So I have another one, she makes books and journals out of used paper. So there are a lot of people who are like on that side, <laughs> really creative. Really creative, uh, yeah. And uh, doing wonderful, wonderful things, all in an effort to divert waste away from the landfill. And, um, you know, so I want to continue to, we have people who turn vinyl banners into pencil cases and book bags. And I mean, so there's so much opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Another organization who's making papers, but they're using plastic bottles. So they shred okay. the bottles and mix it with, I think they mix it with concrete, they're actually using those papers in our zoo. We have one okay. zoo. <laughs> Interesting. So they are using that to make the roads in the zoo. Um, okay, great. So we have we have some of those activities that are definitely growing here. Yeah. Um, but I just want to continue to encourage people to we have so many different kinds of waste items. You know, they may not even have thought about the LDPE that that you mentioned, Zoe, you know. So that's the thing, you know, with mm -hmm. waste, there's so, like you say, there's so many different materials and when it's all mixed together in like a big mess, it's just like you can't do anything with that. Right. You can't mm -hmm. you can't really recover any value from that. So the trick is after like reducing your waste as much as possible, then the waste that you can't avoid 
separate the materials out so, okay these are the plastics and keep you know clean them you'll get familiar with what you can work with yeah. um and you know even in a community if you can get people to separate their metals from their plastics from their food waste mm -hmm. then you've got three instant streams of really useful materials that you can be using to actually um, generate some income you know right. making some useful products uh especially with food waste um you know the soils all over the world are getting really degraded um I, you know there's a, there's a limited number of harvests they say uh looking at how much soil we have you know fertile soil we have left so what we need to be doing is collecting our food waste and composting it down you know biodegrading that waste and turning it into soil conditioner and using that on our soils and the garden will really thank you you know and so you're getting rid of getting rid of a problem and creating a real benefit in the process and it's all free because it's from waste right exactly exactly um so a couple of things as well too um guys as zoe um non-shameless plug um i have composting classes coming up the first one Brilliant. will be on the 13th of june so in case you are interested in learning how to compost um reach out to me and get you and we'll get you signed up for your next um for the, our next composting class and that one will be at give what you can um because i know situation is a bit tight for people so as a way of me giving back but you're still getting all of the information you can give whatever your pocket can afford all right mm -hmm. so um i want us to wrap up there uh guys as i said thank you so much um and marie has since we met she has really been a champion and marie compost as well i am okay. i consider myself to always be a student i have learned from her right Brilliant. um and she really is a fantastic person um uh, and is doing a lot where waste is concerned in her own way to get people to look at ways differently so, so from the time we met with we've, we've been we've been connecting and working with each other and she really is um she's been supporting me and i really appreciate that um you know as i continue to <laughs> as i continue because like we need support right you do, do absolutely yeah. that's what's yeah. nice about being able to connect mm -hmm. online you know because our paths would not have crossed probably well, if, otherwise if, exactly. this is just great you know it's a real privilege to be able to speak to people in trinidad and tobago you know through you sean so thanks very much for providing the platform oh you are most welcome you're most welcome thank you so much again for taking the time out of your day i know you have lots to do mm -hmm. um so guys thank you so much for tuning in don't forget, we are going to be, the video is going to be up on my page and it's going to be up on our YouTube channel to continue to share it with those who uh, you think this can certainly benefit from this information. We talked practical waste solutions with Zoe Lenkovich of Waste Aid. So Zoe, again, thank you so much. Thank Mwah. you so thank much. You. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Sean. Bye. Thanks a lot. Yeah, take care. Okay, okay bye. bye. Thank bye. you.